So please come to a standing position at the top of your mat. You want to find your feet, spread your toes. Try to spread the toes and then rock forward on the tippy toes, rock back on your heels. Again, inhale, rock forward. Exhale, rock back. Good. One more. Inhale, rock forward. And exhale, rock back. Wake up your feet. Good. And then we're going to find the squeeze. Knees together, probably for engaged. So that engagement that allows you to stand up taller. Very good. Hands by the sides. Let's start with our sun salutations. Remember, move with your breath. Inhaling, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Good. Exhale, first one, take it easy. Step it back and lower chaturanga. Elbows over the wrists, strong core. Inhale, upward facing dog. Open the chest, shoulders down, stretch the belly. Press through the tops of the feet. Good. Roll over the toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Spread the fingertips, look towards your belly. You can bend the knees as much as you need to lift the sit bones up to the sky. Very good. Look to your belly, let the head be heavy. Two. Step or jump to your hands. Inhaling, lengthening. Exhale, fold. Inhale, strong feet. Rise, look to your thumbs. And samasthiti ki again. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, Step or jump back and lower chaturanga. Good. Inhale, roll over the toes, press the tops of the feet down. Feel the stretch through the belly. Shoulders down. Exhale, lift the hips, downward facing dog. One. Two. Spread the fingertips, press into the base of the index fingers and thumbs. Good. to the sky, pulling the belly in, five, look forward, step or jump to your hands, inhaling, lengthening, exhale, fold, inhale, strong feet, rise, look to your front, and samasthi tihi, one more, inhale, reach up, exhale, fold, Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step and jump back. Lower chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. For five breaths. Find the posture and then refine it. Try to pull in the belly, lift the sit bones more. Tuck in your lower ribs. Breathe through the nose. Two.
good nourishing movement. Okay? So let's try to squeeze the knees and try to sit into chair pose, Utkatasana. So some people like to reach for the floor and lift up the arms. And then exhale, fold. Good. And then inhaling, lifting the ribs away from the pelvis. Good. Exhale, hands down, step it back, we'll jump back and go over your chatter. Good. Inhale, roll over the toes, open the chest. Good. Exhale, downward dog. Now, to step forward with the right foot, think knee to my chest as far as I can. Step. Okay? If it takes a couple of steps, no problem. Pivot the left heel down. Okay? And then slowly bending into the front knee, draw the belly in, reach up. And exhale, step it back and forward, chaturanga. We inhale up, facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left side, step your left foot through, pivot the right heel down, square the hips, left hip back, right hip forward, bend. Lift the ribs up, reach the hands. Exhale, step it back, forward, chaturanga. Knee, inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog for five deep breaths. Whenever you need, lower to your knees and take a child's pose. Hips to your heels, relaxing the forehead down. Two, choose your resting pose. Downward dog will eventually feel like a resting pose. Three, four, five. Foot forward, step or jump to your hands. Inhaling, lengthening. Exhale, fold. Inhale, squeeze the knees, sit low. And reach up, arching back a little bit. Look to your thumbs. Samasthiti again. Inhale, squeeze the knees, sit low. Reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or jump back, lower chaturanga. Inhaling up, face. Exhale, down, facing dog. Very good. Three. Inhaling, step the right foot through. Bend into the knee, reach up. Exhale, step it back, and lower chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, shoulders down, try to open the chest, and exhale, downward dog. Inhale, step the left foot through, right heel down, bend into the front knee, reach up. Exhale, step it back and lower, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, keep your glutes soft. Exhale, downward facing dog. One, two, externally rotate the arms a little bit from the shoulder. Feel the neck lifting up. Three, four, and five. Foot forward, step or jump to your hands. Inhaling, lengthening. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, sit low and reach up. And samasthiti, beautiful. Feet hip distance apart. We're going to fold forward. The fold magically happens so much better if you feel the massage of the belly. So what you want to do is engage the pelvic floor and then Put your hands on the belly and give yourself a little massage. I love this in the morning, the sensation of starting to feel looser, less heavy in your belly. Catch your big toes, good. Press the toes into your fingertips. Inhale, lift the chest forward. 
Exhale, elbows to the sides, closer to the shins rather than out, way up, because you want the neck to feel comfortable. Let the head hang heavy and breathe. One. Two. micro touch bent and allow your chest to drape down over your thighs. One. Heels on the ground but shifting the way forward. Two. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale there, beautiful. And then slowly rise, come back to center. Samasthi GP, good. We're going to work more standing postures. So if you feel your hip is really tight when we're doing the warriors, right? You could warm up the hips first. So I recommend, let's do one more sun, sun salutation. Some low lunges to help with the tight hips. So inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or jump back or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing chest is open, glutes are soft. Exhale, roll the toes, find your downward facing dog. Spread the fingertips, inhale, reach the right leg up. Reach, 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 good. Exhale, knee to the right tricep, connect. Good, a little warm up for the core as well. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, knee to the nose. You can help modify, coming down to the left knee if you want. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, knee to the left tricep, good. Inhale, lift the leg up, exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, reach. Exhale, knee to the right tricep, connect and hold for two breaths, or bend your elbows to go for a little flying pigeon, good. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knee to the left tricep, connect. Very good. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, step it through. Low lunge, come down to the right knee. Knee over the ankle in the front, so crawl your foot forward. Belly soft. You want to let your hips fall forward, releasing the psoas muscle. Focus at the tip of your nose. Or focus stepping through the front foot. Keep your shoulders down, relax your jaw, and breathe. Hands on hips if you want, or arms up, reaching. And not popping out the ribs, tucking the ribs. Breathe. Two. Three. Four. And five. Good. Hands down, walk your foot to the edge of the mat. Inhale, lift the chest forward. Slide your left knee back off the kneecap or put a towel underneath if the knee is a little tender. And you want to find your lizard pose without grounding your back, okay? If you want, put a block underneath or a book and lift the chest forward. Good, and breathe, breathe through the nose. Two. Three millimeter by millimeter, relax and softening. Good. Four and five. Good. Inhale, lift the torso, left hand in the middle of the mat, right hand on your knee. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen first, 
Exhale, look over your right shoulder. Good. Breathe. If it feels good, you can shift your foot to the edge, finding some rotation in the right hip socket. Three. Four. Five. Good. Back to center. Walk your foot in. Good. We're going to curl the toes in again. So you want to find that strong stepping through in your warriors. You've got to teach your shoulders to work. Press them out of way. And core pulls in and you're suctioning your knee up to your chest. Good. And stepping back and lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Very good. Left side. Inhale, reach the leg up. And exhale, knee to the left, tricep. Inhale, reach. Exhale, knee to the nose, down your back. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knee to the right, tricep, connect. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, reach. Exhale, knee to the left tricep. Try to lift it up higher. If you want, bend the elbows. If you want, kick up. Good. Inhale, lift the leg. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, reach. Exhale, knee to the right tricep. Connect. Good. Inhale, lift. And exhale, step it through, low lunge, right front, left side, right knee down. And you can give your foot a little bit of space to the edge, and definitely forward, knee over the ankle, good. Inhale, hands to hips, exhale. Let yourself relax the hips down. Relax the jaw, it's all connected. Try to say, let it go. Let the hips fall forward. Arms up if you want. Breathing through the nose. Three. Two. And one. Hands down. Walk your foot to the edge of the mat. Inhale, lengthening. Exhale, lifting the chest forward. Sliding your right knee through your back. And letting yourself come down gently, softly into this Pose. Good. Breathing deeply. Two. Focus on the breath. Three. Generating the heat. Massaging the vagus nerve. Four. And five. Beautiful. Right hand in the middle of the mat. Left hand on the knee. Inhale. Lift the chest. Exhale. Twist. Looking over your left shoulder. Relax the shoulder. If it feels good, shift your foot to its edge, creating some rotation in the hip socket. If that doesn't feel good, no problem. Breathe. Three. Two. One. Good. Come back to center. Foot between the hands. Hands pressing into the mat from the shoulders. Step it back. Lower. Chaturanga. Inhale. Upward face. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Very good. We're going to bear walk to the front of our mat. Inhale, lift one foot up with the hip so you feel engagement around the side body on the left. Step the foot two inches forward. Inhale, lift the other foot up. Reach, feel around the side ribs. Engagement, step it forward. Keep going. Walking like a bear. Don't bend your knees as much as you can. If you want, you can try to use some leveraging with the fingertips if you need. But if the palms are flat, you're getting more engagement. Good. Walking and breathing. If you want to intensify, you can do little hops. Okay. Once you get to your wrists, tap the toes to the wrists and breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Two. Three, four, five, 
Ah, good. Feet hip distance apart. Catch your opposite elbows. Release the weight of the neck. Hang there. Start to slowly roll up, vertebrae by vertebrae. So the head will come up last. You want to start from your hips, lower back, mid back, upper back, and then back to Samasthiti Ki. Very good. Let's step our feet three feet distance apart. Turn the right foot out. Heel to heel alignment are a little wider. Going to reach the arms out. So feel length, lift, lift, lift. And you can micro bend the knee, you can also use a block underneath the hand or use your hand leveraging against the shin if you want to catch your big toe. Keep stepping into the foot, feel the femur plugging into your hip socket and open, lean against that imaginary wall. Look up and breathe. Two, reach the top hand up, soften the right shoulder down, good, four, and five, excellent, inhale, come back to standing, feet parallel to each other, exhale, open the left foot, belly in, trying to open the right hip, so you're opening both hips, actually, and reaching the spine and trying to find that length through the torso. So you want to find the lift and hold your hand against the shin or catch your big toe. That doesn't really matter so long as you feel the nice opening through your chest. You open your heart to the sky. You feel lengthening through the right side body and a lot of work stepping to the front foot. Two more breaths. And one more. And slowly come back. Very good. And now we're going to come up back to the top of the mat. Good. Twisted triangles require a lot of balance. So what I want to do for fun is do a little balancing game first. We're going to lift the right knee up. Good. Hands to hips. Inhale. Exhale. Engage the core. Look at one spot on the floor or your nose. Good. So inhale again. Exhale. Kick the leg straight. Inhale. Bend the knee. Exhale. Kick the leg back. Lengthen out. Warrior three. And there's a lot of adjustment. That's good. You're working on your balance. Reach the arms forward if you want. And then slowly come back to bend knee. Good. Kick the leg out. Inhale. Exhale. Bend. Good. Try to stay there. Focus. Inhale. And then exhale. Kick it back. Good. Hands on hips is fine. You can use blocks underneath your hands as well to find how this pose works for your body. Good. And then exhale. Come back. Knee up. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Kick. Inhale. Bend the knee. Exhale. Kick it back. Good. And breathe. Exhale. Come back. Very good. Step the right foot down. If your ankle feels sore of the standing leg, roll it out. Other side, ground your foot, press into the ball uh, of the foot, so into the mound of the big toe. Inhale, knee up. Exhale, kick it forward. Good. Inhale, bend the knee. Exhale, kick it back. Warrior three. Good. Inhale, kick back, knee up. Exhale, kick the foot forward. Look towards your toes. Good. Inhale, bend the knee. Exhale, leg back, reach. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, kick the leg forward. Inhale, bend the knee. Exhale, reach. Two 
beautiful. Inhale, come back to center knee up. And exhale, release. Beautiful work. All right, now back to triangle. So three feet apart. You're going to turn the right foot out. Square the hips, pulling in the belly. You can micro bend the front knee. Find your hand on top of the foot first. Can you shift the weight back? Pull the right femur into your hip socket. And so what we're going to do is lift the spine and roll the chest to the sky. If you want, you can put the foot out, the hand outside of your right foot. Okay, and breathe and lengthen. One. Keep pushing the hips towards the back. Two. Trying to square the hips. Three. Feel you're squeezing your sit bones together. Four. Open the chest more. Five. Good. Inhale. Come back to standing. Feet parallel. Exhale. Inhale. Turn the left foot out. Again. Already you're working on sending the hips back. Trying to square them forward. Belly in. Right hand on top. Left hand reaches up. Keep shifting the hips back. Open the chest by lifting your spine forward and then reaching the top hand up, rotating the ribs. Two, three, belly to the spine, breathe through the nose, four, five, excellent. Inhale, come back to standing, and samastitihi, very good. Now we're going to simply the hands down come down to the tabletop okay another feel good practice for you where you're just trying to get back to the mat is to find how your body moves after you do some sun salutations maybe a couple of standing postures you're warmed up so you want to find a little bit more of that kind of mm, beautiful delicious kind of movement in your body okay so what we're going to do is we're going to first make circles with the torso, with the hips, right? waking up a little bit more, our wrists. So let's do a little wrist stretch as well. Switch the direction of the circles. And then come back and we're going to rotate the fingertips out to the side. Okay. And again, you can do some circles or simply just let yourself shift the hips back. If you feel nothing in there, then rotate the fingertips all the way towards the knees or somewhere in between. And here, try to find the softness. Don't push right away. Let yourself open the front of the wrists, the forearms, letting the hips sink back. Breathe, you can come back a little, inhale, and exhale, stretch the wrists. Very good. And inhale, come back, and exhale, shift back. Inhale, coming back to fingertips forward, spread the fingertips, good. And just a little tip I learned last week with my teacher, if you want to jump through really well, what you have to do is you have to learn to tuck. It's a tuck. You have to bring your knees closer to your chest in order to let the legs slide through when you're jumping, right? So I'm still working on it, um, but I feel this tip was so valuable to feel a little bit more uh, momentum or just consciousness, awareness of how I'm doing the jump through, right? So typically, when you first start jumping through, you can just step, step, sit down, extend the legs, and King always teaches, and then try to lift up into L sit because it'll get you the shoulder strength, right? If you're already jumping through regularly, I want you to try to jump, lifting the knees into the chest, okay? So, like that. And then also a good test that uh, Tim Feldman taught me was to hug your knees into the chest as much as you can. So like when we do some boat pose play, uh, hug the knees into the chest and then grab your feet and keep your knees into the chest as much as you can. 
become really, really compact. And if you let go and your feet are sort of right away moving away from your body, that means that inner deep core awareness is not quite there yet. Okay, so you gotta keep working. But this is a good drill as it is to sit up tall, hold your feet, hug the knees into the chest as much as you can. And that's what you want to achieve when you're jumping through. All right? So, come back to downward dog if you were following the instructions. You could also totally be resting and not caring about jumping through at all. That is just as legitimate in your yoga practice. All right, so trying to jump through. Reaching from the shoulders. You want to feel everything is really working around the shoulder girdle. Your core, your ribs are tucking in. And a not a very rubbery mat helps, so your toes don't scrape it. <laughs> In any case, sit up tall. So working on your jump throughs is a daily routine, unless you're super strong naturally, right? So feet together, point the toes up, and I'm going to just try to find that lift from the inner core, right? So you want, so you want to sit up tall. It's a lift. The spine can't be leaning back, then you're not working very much. Don't lean back on your hands. As much as you can, you can use your hands at first to help you tilt forward. You roll it on your sit bones forward. Feet together, toes, big toes, bring them together as much as you can. Roll the thighs towards each other. Internal squeeze, pelvic floor, lower belly. Hands just hovering underneath your shoulders. Okay, shoulders down, chin to the chest, breathe five breaths. One, two, lift the kneecaps, engage the quads, lift up the ribs more. Four, and five, good, catch your big toes. So, everything the same, but to catch your big toes, you walk your hands forward, and try to not arch your back, not good for your hamstrings. Round the lower back and give yourself time. Allow yourself to feel some release in the lower back. Okay, it feels amazing to de decompress and to lengthen the lower back muscles, right? So if you're just holding your ankles, same idea. If you have a lot of knee pain, by the way, underneath the knees, hands underneath the knees, resting down like this, okay? Otherwise, no pain in the knees, legs fairly straight, and you're trying to actually use your arm muscles to pull your torso forward, shoulders back, breathe. Just three more breaths, three. Two, feet together as much as you can. One, inhale, lift the chest. Exhale there, hands around the sides of the feet or wrists around the feet. And again, you're trying to lengthen yourself out. Good. One, two, three, four, and five, inhale, lift the chest, exhale, slowly cross the feet, and again, you could try to, like in the last pick up, step, 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 walk or jump back, lower chaturanga, inhale, outward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog, good. Look forward again, working on your jump throughs or just sitting down regularly, right? And then you want to extend the legs and we're going to point the toes forward, roll the thighs together, reverse plank, hands down behind you, behind the hips, and you want to internally rotate the arms. Don't try to open the chest. It's not as natural for the shoulder joint. So lifting up the hips, Toes towards the ground. Look up gently, you don't have to drop your head back. Work on the shoulders, pull in the core, squeeze your bum. Two, three, four, five. Beautiful. 
We'll slowly lower down, cross your feet. Good, and lift up again. Take your feet into your hands, lift up the knees into your chest. Good. Breathe, find your comfortable, balanced pose here, and let go of the feet. Lift up the feet a little bit higher, 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 parallel. Shins parallel to the floor, arms forward, lift your heart. Two, three, four, and five. Cross the ankles, hands, for, hands down, shoulders forward, hips back. Lift up, okay? You can always use your feet. Up, good. And again. Now this time, if hamstrings are fairly loose, not too tight, you can lift the legs higher up and breathe. Two, smile, relax your jaw. Three, four, breathing through the nose. Five, opposite ankles cross, pick up, good. Let's do one more. One, two, three, four, four and a half, <laughs> good job, five, next lesson, five sets of Navasana, builds your strength, step it back, lower chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog, stretching your belly, exhale, downward dog, very good, we're going to look forward, step or jump through, sit down, and work a little bit on the hip rotation. So first thing I want you to do is sit with your right knee hugging into your chest. Good. And then you're going to take that external rotation of the hip, foot against the thigh. All right. And here, really important, align the hips. Don't let one hip be behind or in front of the other. Hips are on the same level. Foot. You're pressing the edge of the foot into the floor. And then roll the left thigh into the right foot. Interlace your hands around the foot or hold your ankle wherever you are. If the knee is really high up, blanket, block, anything to prop and relieve some pressure. Inhale, reach the spine forward. So just like an all forward fold, it's the internal pelvic floor belly work, okay? and then also trying to find length starting from the lower back. This should feel amazing for your right side, lower back. Really good if you sit at home a lot, working at the computer, or for other reasons that you don't get to decompress the spine. This is Jana Shashasana A. Breathe. Three. Two. One, inhale, lift the chest forward, exhale, no movement. Yet another chance to just lengthen out a little more. And then cross the ankles, step or jump back. If you need a break, take a break. Lower chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Good, look forward, step or jump through, sit down. Left foot against the right thigh, good. Engage, pulling the toes, uh, dorsiflex, and you're going to lift the chest up. And again, working that left hip joint. Yes, you'll feel a lot of stretch in the right hamstring, bend the knee if you need to. And again, you're trying to find the space to relax forward. Two, three, three. Four, and five, inhale, lift the chest, exhale, no movement, good, and then we're going to go right into our next section on hips, so this is something I really recommend you do if you have tight hips, this is good to do more than once a day if you have the opportunity, make the opportunity, okay, so you're going to sit uh, back, Leaning onto your hands, bend the left knee and cross your right ankle over the right knee. Make sure that the foot doesn't go far, 
Okay, so foot in line with the edge of your left thigh. And you're gonna just, at first, let your hip realize what's happening, okay? If it's really tight, it might not feel very good even when you're leaning back. Sit for at least a minute and let the rotation happen. Let the tissues release, breathing through the nose. If it feels all right, flex the foot, protecting the knee joint, and sit up even taller, okay? So this kind of figure four pose, really good to do every day, even twice a day if you want. Breathe. Two. You can study your foot, you can brush your hair. Three. Focus on the breath. Four. And five. Very good. And then slowly release that, okay? And again, feel, hmm, how does that feel for me? Then we're going to do the other side, of course. So lean back as much as you need to get the foot to cross over the ankle in line with the outside of the thigh. And then again, take your time. You'll notice one side may feel much tighter than the other. This is my happy side. I can sit up and just, so if it's easy, sit up even taller feel what's going on in the outer edges of the left hip and breathe two flex the foot three lift the heart you'll feel it more four and five very good slowly release that so take your time. You can rock around as well. Try to start finding new movements in your body. As you practice with me, if you have questions and you want to ask about some movement, please don't hesitate to message. I love to read your comments. All right. So Baddha Konasana, really quite an advanced pose. Um, it requires a lot of external rotation, right? So one thing you can do is just to teach yourself to work with the feet, you know. I find that often uh, in certain sort of approaches to yoga, the feet are forgotten uh, quite a bit. And um, I discovered uh, here in Toronto with my teacher, David Robson, he points your attention to every part of the practice. And so the feet, I've become to realize are very important in your yoga practice. So open your feet like a book. It might sound easier said than done, but if you allow yourself to explore the movement, maybe one side opens better than the other, right? You want to explore that. Set up to all elbows close to the torso. Try to open the feet like a book first with your hands and then try to let go of the hands and see if you can prop yourself with the hands behind you. See if you can open the feet a little bit more so that eventually you'll feel, oh, okay, I think I'm having a little bit more space. You can shift the hips a little closer to the heels. Good. And maybe that's it. And you stay and you breathe. If it feels all right, try to lift up the chest more, pinning the inner thighs down, and just lift your chest forward and breathe. You don't have to go down very far, but feel the release in your hips. Go inside the hips. Explore what is happening. Feel your lower back lengthening. Continue to give yourself assessment without judgment. So what's happening? Where is it happening? And try to find some loving kindness uh, in your mind towards yourself. So even if it feels really stuck, tight, uncomfortable somewhere, so long as there's no sharp pain, just explore the posture. Good. And then slowly we're going to come back. Good. And to close the practice, back then it's really good, very, 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 very good for you. I cannot tell you how amazing I feel if I do my back bends every single day. So lie down on your back, and this is really quite important. Do feel like you are working the lower back muscles and like you are 
not letting the glutes take over. My teacher here in Toronto, David Robson, always says, soft bum, don't squeeze those glutes. Uh, in gymnastics, perhaps you would, but not in yoga if you want to. Let the glutes relax. So if you hold your ankles, for example, you can lift up and just allow some gentle uh, movement first. You can put a block under your sacrum and make this very restorative, okay, or hands dropping you up. That might feel really, really good. And then if that feels super good, you can interlace your hands at the knee, elbows down, press your feet into the ground and breathe. Chin away from the chest. Two. Three. Four. And five. Slowly lowering back down. Hug your knees into the chest. Rock from side to side. If you like, just do two more just like that. If you want to do a little bit more, uh, wheels are really very good. So for your wheel, I'd like you to really work on technique. Why? Because you want to avoid shoulder injuries, okay? So for your back bending, your elbow has to be over your wrist. So put your hands by your ears and then check. Is my elbow moving somewhere in a direction that's not just above the, or above the wrist? Then adjust it. It might feel super tight around the shoulder girdle. You might not come up all the way up, but working on it can help you to move into the posture gradually without stressors and injuries. So you lift up your hips, and go onto the top of the head. That's already an amazing backhand. Stay there. If you like, you can press through the lift up and then shift your chest forward over the wrist, past the wrist, open the chest. Let the head hang heavy. Relax the neck. Breathe. Two. Three. Four. Five. Good. You can lie down slowly and hug the knees into the chest to take a break or rest coming down to the head, maybe walking the hands in a little bit and one more back bend. Breathe. Soft bum, belly in. Two. Three. Four. And five. Well done. Slowly come down, hug the knees into the chest. Gently, you can rock side to side. Good. And you can stay here just resting like this. Or if you're ready for some shoulder stance, by the way, lying against the wall, putting your bum right up against the wall and legs up uh, can allow you to have the benefits of a shoulder stand without stressing your neck. Okay? So you're going to lift up the legs. Try not to lean them too much back and try not to throw them up. If you want to work on technique, try to lift the hips up. A little tuck crunch motion. Do 10 if you want before your shoulders stand. Inhaling, lifting up. Hands on your lower back. Squeeze your bum down. Point your toes. Look towards your toes. Or look at the tip of the nose, belly in. Squeeze your bum. Walk the hands a little bit higher up. Chin away from the chest. Good. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. Hinge at the hips, bringing your feet behind you. If that doesn't feel good, your toes are not touching the ground, keep supporting your lower back. If the toes are on the ground, then I want you to interlace your hands. Elbows down first, okay? Keep that internal rotation of the arms and breathe. 
to try to lift the hips right over the shoulders. So find a little bit more length in the spine. Three. Four. Very good. Five. Knees around the sides of the head, squeezing yourself gently with the knees. If that doesn't feel good, you can come right back up into a regular shoulder stand. Do what feels right for your body. Two, three, four, and five. Very good. Slowly unravel. We're going to work on the last part of the sequence eventually, okay? So, after shoulder stand, the reverse pose is Matsyasana or fish pose. What you want to do is you want to find a way to work on arching your back. So, preparation first, hands by the ears, and you want to lift up onto the crown of the head. Okay? Legs straight, just stay here, or lift the legs up, arms up, for your other version. So again, working on some key principles, breathing and enjoying your beautiful breath. Two, three, four, roll on the hips a little bit further forward against the core, five, very good. Hug the knees into the chest and we're going to gently rock up if you like. You can already go into your Shavasana for today. That was wonderful. And if you want to do a headstand, let's do a headstand. I miss guiding you guys into headstands. I miss practicing with my dear students. So I hope you're keeping up your practice. And this is, again, a reminder that I'm here for you and that we can work together even online. So uh, recall, headstand is not just your head, it's your shoulders, it's your core, right? So elbow width apart, hands down, pinkies pressing, wrists pressing into the ground, very important. All the way to the elbow, this is your support. You don't have to go all the way up, you don't need to pick up, please don't throw yourself up, but try to meditatively lift up. Okay, you can use the wall as your friend. Head down. So again, learn some cool things. Uh, this past week, uh, you do not want to find a place on your head where you feel a lot of pressure on your neck, right? So typically, towards the hairline is safer than towards the back of the skull, right? So find your spot. It could be a little bit more towards the flat part of your head or a little towards more the hairline. You find where your neck feels good. Okay, so head down. Press the mat away already. Press. Lift the shoulders away from the ears. None of this. Press. Lift up onto your feet and maybe that's your headstand. If you want, walk the feet in to start lifting up with straight legs is nice but takes time. So if you're not quite there yet, what you want to do is work on the slow lift up. So that could mean just knees into the chest, using a wall to help you not fall is a good idea when the teacher is not there to physically catch you. Breathe. One. Two. Three, keep breathing, make sure you're breathing. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. If you do pike, go ahead and do pike. And if you don't, just lower back down. Child's pose for at least five breaths. One, two, soften the shoulders. Three, very good. Four, and five. Excellent. So now you can do one more vinyasa. You can write, write, lie down right into shavasana. Okay. 
or you can come in through your yoga mudra pose. We'll work on that in the next class. Or just cross-legged and try to cultivate your breath a little bit more. Finding a tall seated spine. Beautiful. Look at the tip of the nose, drop the chin down. Allow yourself to become a calm, quiet mind that's not interested any longer in the physical practice. Instead, you are focusing on being in your body. So when you're ready, whenever you're ready, lie down for Shavasana and please spend at least a couple of minutes resting, relaxing, rejuvenating, recharging, and being happy in your beautiful body. Thank you so much for the honor of guiding you. I will close the practice with Om, but please rest a little bit more at home on your beautiful yoga mat. All right? So inhale for Om. Namaste.